The way to think about a job hunt is basically it's like selling and you're selling yourself to companies and what you provide. And so what defines you is your brand. It's never too early to start thinking about where you're going. A lot of students put this off and say, oh, I don't have to worry about this Thomas Senior whatever. But it's just like the story I told you before. You don't get into MIT if you wait to the last minute to apply. The goal of this lecture is to get you to look at your job hunt differently, to see yourself differently, and also to get you going sooner rather than later. This is one of the saddest stories that I hear from students when they said, Dr. Cho, what do I do? I've applied to 200 jobs and I'm not getting anywhere. Why is this happening? Well, one is they don't have the skills. They just don't have the hard skills to sell. One of the saddest things I saw once is a student and he was working in Best Buy and I asked him, what are you doing here? You graduated. And he said, well, nobody will hire me. And it's because he didn't have hard skills. Now you can recover, you can go get certificates and things like that and build up the credentials. There was a math major who wanted to get into the insurance game and he couldn't do it because he didn't have the skills. And so actually he had to wait a year or two after he graduated and now he's got his dream job and he's, he's very happy, but you can get there. You need work experience. The reason why you need work experience is companies view you as an egghead. Yeah, you sat in classes, but does that mean I should hire you? To validate what you've learned, you need work ex experience. And finally, you just ran a poor search. And here's the problem. Once you apply to somebody, you're in their database. So if they didn't like you the first time, they're probably not going to like you the second time. So you've basically poisoned the water. So be careful about how many applications you send out and who you send them to. This is why it's so important to do it right the first time. The crux of a search is that experience is worth a ton, but here's the trap. You can't get a job unless you have experience, but how do I get experience if you don't offer me a job? <laughs> and there are different ways you can get experience, whether they're internships, volunteer at a startup, then you can put it down that you have industrial experience. And of course, there's searching, which is a grind. And this is where you have to hustle. I told you the story about myself and 2%. Well, if that's what it requires, that's what it requires. Once you have uh, experience, then you have a lot of options. My sophomore year, again, I couldn't get a job. Then my junior year was the 2%. But my senior year, I applied to 10 jobs and I got nine offers. Why didn't I get the 10th offer? Um, I rejected the company in the, <laughs> in the middle of my interview, but it looked like they were really interested in me. Again, once you have job experience, you have a lot of options. You have to manage your career. This is the reality of the world. A lot of you think, oh, I got my degree. It's a golden ticket. All I have to do is cash it in and you'll give me a job. That's not the way the world works. And the reason why is there are a ton of college graduates and plus you're competing against international employees. And so people from overseas want to come here and get jobs. And so this is a very difficult situation. And this is why you have to pretty much start managing your career from the moment you get to a university. First of all, you have to think about what is my objective? Why am I doing this job hunt? Do you just invade a place? No, you get intelligence first. You need to understand the landscape. What are the things that you need to consider? What is it that you're selling? Who are you going to go ahead and target? And what's special about you? How do I push myself? And so that's about the resume, the cover letter, and also the interview. Remember the funnel? That's what you're going through. And this is one thing a lot of job hunters don't do. You should have a database and figure out feedback. Essentially, when I get information, 
what should I do next? Do I just, and this is the problem with people who have 200 failures. All they did was keep repeating the same failure over and over and over again. And so you need to think about what it is you're doing and how to improve on it. Now, in terms of steps three and four, there are one of two ways to go about it. It's either bottoms up or top down. And bottoms up means I look at jobs and I try to find opportunity. Or top down is I know what I'm looking for. So now I have to target my job search in that way. Things to consider in the landscape. Is the market hot or cold? And is there any context going on? Are there certain things like, for example, we have war going on right now in the Ukraine. Uh, how is that going to affect the job market? What kind of trends are there socially? The nature of it all is the company is a buyer and you are a seller. And so this is a marketing transaction. And the way to think of a transaction is first, what are your intrinsic, your extrinsic, and what are your needs are? And so based on those needs, you're going to communicate what you're about to a hiring enterprise. And one of the biggest things that companies do when they hire is how much can I trust you? And so it's not always about skills. Skills are a very big part of it, but also it's about building up that trust and rapport with someone. That's why people get hired. Some of the intrinsic considerations when you're looking for a job. Location. What industry? Maybe a specific company interests you. And what's the position? From the company's perspective, what value do you bring? Why should I buy into you? Why are they hiring? What do they need? Do you know, do you actually understand the company? And who are you going up against? Because if you go head to head with somebody, then it becomes a coin flip, unless you happen to be really exceptional in a certain field. And so how are you going to differentiate yourself from somebody else? The value you bring is what's exceptional about you. Why should I hire you? And you would be amazed how many people can't answer these questions. But they're very fundamental and they will ask it. Why should I hire you versus somebody else? And if you can't answer these questions, you don't have a job search. You're not going to get a job. Now, when we talk about values, the things you want, the considerations are economic, utility, and emotion. How is it going to make me feel? And how much of these are important to you is up to you but you try to build a career off this. Why should I hire you? Again, hard skills, cultural fit, and added value. Have to have a plan ahead of time. Just don't dive in. So think about your marketing, your strategy, and your product. Your brand, what is a brand? The first step in a brand is differentiation. How do they perceive you as being unique? The next part of building a brand is relevance. How relevant am I to what they're doing? How good a fit and match am I? Then it's esteem. How do you make them feel? And finally, knowledge. What do they need to know about you? This is the journey that you're going to take the hiring manager on. And so your differentiation and relevance, that's what you can convey in your application. And esteem and knowledge that's what you convey during your interviews. Some example of brands, I'm the closer. This was actually my very first brand, and it's because I learned it from my very first boss. And what he told me is, Steve, here's my advice to you. Be the guy who gets things done. There are a lot of people who look busy and a lot of people who think they're getting things done but aren't. If you're the person who can close on things, there'll always be a job for you somewhere. Good advice. Maybe you're the problem solver. Maybe I'm the fixer. Maybe you're the innovator, the right hand to somebody, that you're the person who's a heavy mover who can make things happen. Or maybe you're the high energy person. I knew one person who, in an interview, said, well, I'm like the Energizer Bunny. I just keep going and I do things very quickly. Um, 
but think about what it is that describes you. Some of the drivers are, what's your fastball? What is it that you do best? For myself, it's process development. That's always been my fastball. Uh, working with chemistry is what I do well. What work experience do you have? And once again, all jobs boil down to uh, the three objectives. Now, one big problem TEM students run into is describe your degree to me. I don't understand it. At its heart, TEM is a business degree. But then they say, well, why don't I just hire somebody from WP Carey? Your selling points are first, hopefully you develop some kind of hard skill, something that they value on. What it comes down to is a TM degree is a blend of business and technology. It's more than just having the fundamental aspects of business like finance and marketing and that sort of thing. There's also the blend of technology in it because technology runs everything. What's the value of technology? <clears throat> Zero. And unless you can apply it to a good or service, it has no value. That's why you need to link technology with business. And in terms of being an innovator, this is what the TEM degree is about. Instead of learning traditional business, where you can find pretty much at any business school, you're about modern business. And so strategy isn't about business plans, it's about business models. It's about doing more with less. And so this requires an amount of creativity and innovation. And that's what you bring to the table that's different from a standard business student. And so you can go ahead and read uh, the rest of this table. So do you have the skills? You need to develop hard skills in your studies. You need to be part of their culture which you learn about in TEM classes, and do you bring added value? What story do you want to tell? And that's what your resume is about, and that's what we'll talk about in the next lecture.